Hello and welcome to New Planet School. In this video I'm going to continue talking about Mac Grapher and in particular I'm going to talk about integration. Now here's a reminder of where you can find Mac Grapher and when you click on Mac Grapher and you go in there you might find something that would surprise you is that Mac Grapher actually knows how to do calculus. And in particular, it knows how to do um, definite integrals, and it also knows how to do indefinite integrals. And even more, it's able to do that in 2D and 3D. So that's what we're going to talk about. It also is a, a nice way to learn how to do some numerical integrals because it has a some options for you to be able to play with that and also it it happens to do derivatives also so I'll cover that very briefly towards the end okay so how would this be useful to you um, if you're learning calculus I think it's really important that you can see visually what integration really is to give you a, a really good feel and um, intuition for for what it really means and by doing many examples, which you can do in Grapher very quickly, um, you could build up your knowledge and intuition and thinking about integrals very rapidly. You can also use it to test yourself because you can make up your own problems and you can use Grapher to give you the answer to see if you're right or not. Also, you can use this to check your work. If you're taking a calculus class, you want to know if you got the right answer, you want to check something out, you have uh, Matt Grapher available to help you do that. And because Matt Grapher allows you to export any of the graphs that you make, you can um, use this to make beautiful graphs to put in your reports. So lots of great uses for what's going to be covered in this video. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is start with a review of some calculus topics very quickly, just because it'll be easier when we get to Matt Grapher to have these concepts behind you so that you can see the breadth of what it does and, and, and see what it doesn't do. And so let's start off very quickly by going through some standard examples from calculus that, that are going to be useful. Okay, what we'll do is we'll start off first by looking at definite integrals. And what we'll do is look at five different examples. One is area under a curve, what Grapher calls surface area, and I'll define what that means in a second, the length of a line, the volume of revolution, and the surface area of revolution. So these are the five main things that Grapher does in the area of definite integrals. So let's review each one of these so that when you come across them in your work or your classes, you'll, you'll remember what they are and how Grapher handles them. Okay, so let's start off with the simplest one, which is area. And if you remember what area is in calculus, you want to know, say, the area under this curve from minus 3 to 3. And what you do is you add up the area of all these rectangles. And then you take the limit as the width of the rectangles goes to 0. And you get the area under this curve. And that looks like in Grapher something like this, which we write in calculus in, in the following way. The area is the integral from minus 3 to 3, in this case, dx of y of x, where this curve up here is y of x. Now, don't get confused by the fact that the dx comes first. You sometimes see this as y of x times d of x. You see this a lot in textbooks. Um, but in practice, a lot more people actually use this notation. It's the same because y times dx is the same as dx times y, just like a times b is the same as b times a. So Grapher likes to use this notation, which I find more people actually use, but textbooks might use this more. But it's, it, it's all the same thing. So, okay. Now another example is surface area, and... Grapher does surface area because it recognizes the following um, fact. Suppose you want to integrate this curve right here, which is a slightly different curve, from minus 3 to 3. And if I integrate this to get the area, this is going to contribute as a negative amount, as is this, 
whereas this part is going to contribute as a positive amount. But if you just want to know the total area, that wouldn't represent the total area. So Grapher has a way of dealing with that by getting the integral under this curve. But what it does is it takes the absolute value of the function so that you always get a positive answer. So if this were negative, what it would do is it would really be doing this curve. It would be flipping it over for you so that all the contributions are then positive and you get the actual surface area of that curve. Imagine if this was a shape you needed to paint and you wanted to know how much paint you needed. Obviously you would not want negative paint here and negative paint here. You just want to know the total area. So that's another thing that Grapher does. Okay, length. Now length is a little bit more complicated. Um, suppose I want to know the length of this curve from say minus 3 to 3 again. What I would need to do is figure out a way to do that. One way to do that is to say let me take a point here and draw a line. Let me take a point here, draw a line, a point here and draw a line. And I keep doing that as I go down this curve. And I notice that each one of these is a triangle. And I know how to find the hypotenuse of a triangle if only uh, Pythagoras was here. Oh, there he is, perfect. So what we can do is use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of this curve, given that each one of these is delta x. And we know what the heights are here and here because those are the values of the function. And we can add them up and we get the total length of this curve. And with Pythagoras's help, we find that the length of the curve is a sum over each one of these segments given by this, which you can see is the hypotenuse. And by rewriting it, finally taking the limit as dx goes to 0, we get an equation that looks like this for the length of the curve. And that's something that uh, Matt Graffer has built in it um, as well. So that's something that's very useful and available in Graffer. So the next one, volume of revolution. In this case, what we have is a curve represented here in a normal 2D plane. But what we're going to do is imagine that this curve is being revolved around this axis. And so we can draw one on the bottom like this. And we're imagining now that there's a a, a rotational axis here and we want to know what is the volume inside of this object that's been rotated around this this axis and this is called the volume of revolution well to get that volume of revolution we can approximate that by saying that there's a disk here with some area which is going to be pi y squared, that's the area of this disk, times some delta x, and that gives me the volume of this little cylinder, and if I add those all up, I get that the volume is the integral d dx pi y squared from some b to some a. Okay, so that is another way to get, that's a kind of an interesting example because you get, by looking at just an, a single integral, you get a three-dimensional um, concept out of it. Similarly, we can do the lateral area of revolution, again, starting with a curve that looks like this. We can imagine that that, again, has been rotated around the axis, the x-axis in this case. But now we want the lateral area. So what we want is we're imagining now that this thing has been rotated around like this. And we have this shape that looks kind of like this. And now we want the actual, just the surface area. How much paint would it take to, to paint the outside of this vessel? Well, 
turns out that if you work through it, again, using the help of Pythagoras, you get a formula that looks like this. And that is another example of a sort of a three-dimensional concept that you can get from cons considering just a, a, a single integral. And that's something that Graffer has built into it as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is move to indefinite integrals. And just, just as a reminder, indefinite integrals are sometimes called antiderivatives. Okay, now it's important to keep in mind that Mac Grapher doesn't really know how to do indefinite integrals, but it does something very close that could still be very useful. So this is something I'm going to go through a little bit more slowly because it's a little bit more subtle. So let's start off by looking at just some notation here. Suppose I'm going to do an antiderivative. So you notice that this integral right here, it doesn't have anything on the limits. It just says integrate y, lowercase y, but there's no limits, okay? And I'm gonna call that capital Y. So this is what you would call the antiderivative is, is this. I found the antiderivative of this function. And so, interestingly, if I took capital Y and found the derivative of it, I would get the lowercase y. Right. Okay. So this is a v actually a very difficult thing for a computer to do, and to do it correctly really would require something that does symbolic algebra. And the, Matt Graffer doesn't do this. For this, you'd need something like Mathematica or um, SymPy. If you use Python, you need something else. MATLAB has a toolbox that does symbolic algebra. You need something like this, and this isn't what uh, Mac Graffer does. But what it does is it do is something closely related to that. What it does is it knows how to do definite integrals, which I will show you, and through the fundamental theorem of calculus, the definite integral of a function is the difference in the antiderivatives at evaluated at the endpoints. So it knows how to do that, and that's we've we've discussed that already. Now, how can we use that to connect definite integrals to indefinite integrals? So what it does is it writes the definite integral from some lower limit a up to some upper limit x. And now I've replaced the integration variable through this dummy variable x over here. Now I'm just calling it a dummy variable t, just so that it's not confusing. It doesn't matter what you call it. But if I write it this way, notice I get the antiderivative evaluated at x minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. And if I wanted to know the antiderivative of y, lowercase y, now I have it. It's right here. Okay, And that is the trick that Matt Graffer uses to allow you to get an indefinite integral. But keep in mind that even though you get this, you're also getting this constant also. Now sometimes this constant is zero, and that may be fine, um, but sometimes it isn't. And so keep in mind that it's there. And I'll show an example where that, where that makes a difference. Okay. Now, Matt Graffer uses a very unfortunate notation, so don't get confused by this. It uses a notation that looks like this, where it uses an x up here as a limit of the integral, and it uses the x as a dummy variable. So don't get confused by that. Um, just keep in mind that this is the upper limit of integration, which will ultimately go in here, and this is just a dummy variable. It's unfortunate, but that's the way they set it up. Okay. Now, integration in 3D, everything we've been looking at were 2D functions of y versus x. So what does Matt Graffer do in 3D? It does two things. Um, the first thing I'll discuss is it does the volume. And so here we have some surface represented in 3D. This is the x, y, 
and the axes. And what it does is it does an integral over x from a to b, and then it does an integral from y from c to d. So you can think about it like there's a plane down here, and then there's some function z, and it does that volume that's in that particular geometry right there. And that's what it evaluates. Sort of obvious. Okay, the second thing that it does is closely related to that. It's something we've sort of seen in, in the 2D case is it also does a surface area. So if this is our function z, it performs this particular, this should be an s. It computes this this function here, which is a surface area, which is sort of like adding up the area of all these little boxes up here to get the surface area of that surface. And so that's what it does in 3D. Okay, now, where do you find all of this? The way you find this in Grapher is first you either go in and you're doing a 2D graph and you're going to select that set of options. And once you're in there, you go under equation in the menu bar and what you'll see here is integration here. You also see integrate here. And notice that they're grayed out. The reason they're grayed out is because I haven't typed in an equation yet. But you can see that they're there. Or if you happen to have an equation in there already that's been selected, these will be black instead of gray. Now if you go in 3D and you select the type of graph you want, again go under equation in the menu bar, what you'll find is, as you'll see, it says here integration. Um, but notice that the menu is different. And that's a general feature of Grapher when you've gone in through the 3D route or you've gone in through the 2D route, often the menus are very different. Like for example, you can label the axes and customize things more in 2D than you can in 3D, so therefore the menus are different. And then just as a side, I'll talk about this a little bit later, this is how you access differentiate to do um, derivatives as well. So that, that's where, where, where they're hidden. Okay. Now, let's, so let's just start off by looking at some definite integrals. So let's open up this window so that we can see it. Okay, and then we're going to type in our function here, y equals sine of x. Okay, there's a sine of x curve. And then let's add an equation to that. Let's do x cubed over 3. So we have two functions that we can look at. Just have two, just have two things that we can um, check. Okay, just let's make these a little bit bigger so that they're easier to see before we get started. Okay, make that have a line with the four. Let's make them actually have both have a line with the four, so you can see them. While we're at it, we might as well change their color. I mean. Matt Grapher makes this easy, so let's just make it look good so that we have something nice that we can work with. Okay, so let's clear up these boxes. Go up here, there's our functions. Now select one of them, sine x in this case, go under equation, and there it is, integration, and this box will come up. And now let's just work our way through everything that's in this box. So the first thing you want to do is press calculate right away because there's going to be a number there and who knows where it came from. It depends on what you were previously doing. So clear it and see what you what you actually get. So now we can change the limits of integrals. Here I'm changing the limits from minus 1 to 2.5 and you can see I get 1.3413. Change the limits to some other values. I get another result 1.2 and on the bottom there you can see that you can play with the different numerical method that it's using and notice that you don't always get the same answer so if you're trying to check your work make sure you pay attention to that okay here I've switched to surface notice that you can see that it says absolute value of y so now it's giving the actual area now here's length I can calculate the length of the curve from 0 to 0.5 
Here's the volume of revolution. Notice now that it's when I press calculate, I'm getting pi y squared. And here's the lateral area of revolution, according to that formula I showed earlier. And then I can switch to the other equation and do basically the same thing. I can get all of those five different types of integrals from area to surface, length, surface area of revolution, and volume of revolution. And I can change the different limits of integration and change the integration method if I need it to be more accurate. So basically, that's how you do definite integrals in Grapher. Very, very simple. Once you understand what, what's available to you, you can see it's easy to access all of those things. OK, now let's do indefinite integrals. So now I'm going to remove that area. And now I'm, instead, I'm going to go not here, but I'm going to go down here where it says integrate. And you can see that it shows an integral sign up here from 0 to x. And interestingly, in Grapher, you'll notice that, I'll do this to the other equation as well, that off to the left is really jagged and, and sort of messy off to the left. And that typically happens when it's displaying part of the graph that has values of x lower than the lowest limit of integration. And it tends to be wrong. And some people have seen this out on the web and some people haven't. So if you have any ideas about how to fix that, please leave it in the comments. But as long as you look at positive x, or let me say x that's to the right of your lower limit of integration, you get a perfectly fine result. And so let's, let's check that. What I can do is I know that the integral of sine of t over here is given by minus cosine plus 1. So I can plot that and notice that they were right on top of each other. Here I'll shift it slightly so that you can see that. I also know that the integral of t cubed over 3 is going to be x squared x to the fourth over 12. So I can also type that equation in to make sure that it's correct. And you'll see that, again, it lies right on top of the curve. And let me shift it to prove to you that there's actually two curves there. And sure enough, there are two curves. So there, there, there you go. So just keep in mind that there's this strange uh, behavior with Matt Grapher over on this side. If the x that you're looking at, this is the x that you're looking at, is lower than the lower limit of integration. And notice all of these go from 0 to x, 0 to x. Um, the lower limit of integration can be changed, and so it's important to uh, keep that in mind. But that's how you can do indefinite integrals. So if you want to check yourself when you're doing an indefinite integral, um, this is one, one way to do it. And the main thing, as I said earlier, to keep in mind is keep track of there's this extra constant that's sitting there because it's actually doing this integral numerically to try to generate and display this function. Okay. All right, so two more things just to keep in mind. Let me close these first. So one of the interesting things you can do if you select this function, you can actually go in and have it integrate again. And so now I've done basically a double integral. And as I mentioned, you can also change the lower limit of integration. So here I'm changing it from 0 to 1 minus 1, actually. Let me change it to plus 1, and then I can change the lower limit on the other integral as well. So keep in mind you can do uh, multiple integrals this way. Just keep integrating over the same variable, and you can change the lower limit of integration if that helps you. Like, for example, if you're trying to check an antiderivative, you might want to choose that lower limit of integration to make sure that that constant term goes to 0 for example. So those are two other quick things. Okay. Now, don't forget that uh, one of the nice things about Matt Grapher is that you can easily export things into your report. So if you make a nice picture that looks like this, you know, all you need to do is go under Edit and then go under Copy As and select the type of 
file you want, TIFF or whatever you want. It'll go into the clipboard and then you can put that into your report. So really nice feature if you're teaching or learning about calculus. Okay, now what about 3D? So in 3D, we have those two options. So let's try that out. We go in here, we'll select a 3D graph. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay, now let's type in a function. Let's do sine of y times x. Okay, that's a little bit jaggedy. Let's divide it by something just to get something smoother. And then so we can see under it, let's lift it up a bit. Three. Okay, so there we have a nice surface. It's floating up above uh, z equals three. And let's type in another function, z equals three, just so we can see that, yes, that function is around z equals three. Now, since we're doing integrals, let's plot that in terms of the height of that function so we can see it, and now we can... Uh, Remove that because we're convinced of where it is. Okay, now what we want to do is integrate under this curve. We go under integration. There's only one option because we're in 3D. And here we have basically the same thing. Remember to press calculate right away because there's going to be a number there that has nothing to do with what you're doing. Again, you can change the method of integration. Romberg, Euler, Runge-Kutta. Choose whatever you want, change the tolerances if you're interested in numerical methods or making it more accurate. And you can do the volume and the area, and the equation will change accordingly, and it will um, update itself when you press the Calculate button. Just, just like it was basically in 2D, it's just you have fewer options. Now here's an interesting check. If I put that z equals 3 up there, just as a check, I can do the integration of that curve. And this one, I better know the answer because I'm going from minus 5 to 5, which is 10, and minus 5 to 5, which is 10, and the height is 3. So 10 times 10 times 3 is 300, and I got the right answer. So you can use these constant surfaces as nice checks to make sure you're interpreting and using the software um, correctly. Okay, now let's talk about derivatives. This, video has been about integrals, but notice under here you can also differentiate. So here I took the sine, and I took the derivative, and I got the derivative of that function, which should be cosine, if I remember calculus well, and sure enough, there it is. Let me move it off a little bit just to prove that there are really two curves there. And so something useful to know that uh, Matt Graffer also does derivatives. It also, you can keep applying it, does second derivatives by just applying that operation twice. Now the second derivative of sine should just be minus sine. So let's try that. Yep, sure enough, the curves overlap. Let me move it off just to prove there's two curves there. And there you have it. So Matt Graffer also does derivatives, but basically the ideas are, based, are the same as, as doing integrals. Okay, and with that we're done. Thank you for being here.